Hey guys, it's Kimberly with the Fat Quarter Shop, and we are so excited to have Aditya Sitar of Laundry Basket Quilts. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Kimberly, for having me. I would love to share with you the technique of fusible applique. We have talked many times about it, and I know you are excited about it. Yes. We're gonna try to make a block for the umbrella quilt. The quilt is right behind us. And what you're gonna need for the umbrella quilt is, first of all, some fabrics. And I chose a layer cake from Jelly Bean Collection because it has a great variety. Layer cakes usually have 42 pieces in it, so there's plenty to choose She's from. Good. We're gonna need 30 for our quilt. We're gonna need some background fabrics. We're gonna need a pattern stencils and it's going to be your first time to use a stencil and we're going to need a little bit of fusible webbing and we're going to talk about it how we're going to use that okay so let's get started let's choose some fabrics kimberly okay from this jelly bean batik layer cakes we can choose 30 different pieces that we're going to use in our umbrella yes. quilt we're going to be cutting every single shape out of every single square and then we're going to shuffle them around to make a really fun look to it okay we're gonna need a pattern, and in a pattern, you have all your shapes reversed. Because we use infusible applique, the shapes need to be reversed. I have chose for us uh, two pieces of fabric for the umbrella, and I have chose for us a, a background fabric. This background fabric is cut to nine and a half inch square, and that's the size uh, for our blocks. The finished size is nine inches. So you cut that down before you put your applique pieces yes. on. Yes, and you know what I like to do is I also like to press my fabric, and I use Best Press and gently spray, press it, so I have no wrinkle. That's how I prepare my backgrounds and my pieces, my fabrics for appliques. Excellent questions. We cannot forget the pressing. But let's move on to drawing. So I'm gonna push those to the side. We're gonna use a fusible webbing. And in this case, I'm using um, lightweight heat and bound for fusible webbing. Fusible webbing is a piece of paper and a, a fusible netting stuck to it. We're gonna draw on the paper. And remember we talk about that if we're doing fusible applique, the pieces have to be reversed. When we're drawing with our stencil, this is the stencil that goes with the umbrella pattern, it is important that we compare that our stencil is the same way because it's very easy to flip it over and our umbrella will not be spinning the right way. So I place my stencil on my paper, just like this, and I like to use a regular pencil. Do you want to try it? Yeah. And I just slide my pencil right in those nicks and crannies and draw. And you don't have to draw it hard, just gently, just draw it. Why do I use a regular pencil? When I press it, then the pencil doesn't disappear, doesn't transfer to the fabric, also does not discolor my fabric. And those are important things when you draw. So simple pencil. And did you notice my pencil is not very sharp? It's rather round and dull because I want my pencil to sit in in the groove and when I slide it stays right in the middle that way I know I'm accurate sometimes when you use a very thin pencil it slides to one side and changes the size of your pieces so we're gonna draw it and now once we finish drawing all of the pieces they're gonna look just like this right here it's time to cut and the first thing that I do is I rough cut out of the fusible webbing to prepare for fusing to my fabrics. I have rough cut my shapes and do you notice I have cut out the center of my um, umbrella. umbrella. I call this window out. I don't want too much fusible webbing. I want the fusible webbing to be a stabilizer on the edges of my appliques to hold it down in place for me so I can beautifully stitch around it. So what I like to do is get rid of some of the fusible webbing and that way my a quilt is gonna be softer, softer and lighter. You have to leave at least one eight. I like to leave like a quarter inch around it from each side so that way I know I definitely gonna have fusible webbing on the lines that are important for me. And another rule of thumb for me is when I layer my shapes, I always try to uh, window the one that it's below so that way when I put another shape over, I don't have double layers of fusible webbing. Okay, our shapes are prepared. Now we're gonna need the iron. Do you wanna help me with that, please? Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
I'm using a small ironing board. Those ironing boards are very nice because they are great for fusible uh, applique. You do not want to use an ironing board that has a silver cover on it because the silver reflects the heat too fast and you're not fast enough to press it and it melts your fusible webbing too fast. Now I'm going to place my fabric and we chose batiks for our project. I love batiks simply because the colors are so amazing. I like um, to look at it, my batiks, there's a, um, really also a benefit to it. There isn't a right and a wrong side of batiks. Both sides have a beautiful color. One has a little bit lighter color and one it's a little bit darker. The lighter side is where the wax goes on it. That's why it's a little bit lighter. I always like to press my fabrics first just to double check myself. Remember, we press the fabrics before we cut it. And tell me about the iron we're using today, because I know that you love this iron. Oh, this is one of my favorite irons, and I have quite a few of those at home. <clears throat> you know, we quilters, we can't just have one. We have to have multiple machines, multiple irons. I like this iron for fusible applique and for any quilting, simply because it has a nice uh, T-fall finish on it, and it, when I press it, it slides beautifully on my fabric, and my fusible webbing, if it gets stuck to it, I can wipe it off, and it doesn't overheat. I'm not using water in it. No steam, no water in your iron when you're doing a fusible applique, because you don't want the paper to crinkle from the, from the water. So I pressed my fabric, and now let's place our pieces, and I'm gonna place all the pieces on one square, and all that I'm gonna do is, and my iron is set on cotton setting, so not too hot. Less is better. We have to remember when we're pressing our pieces, we don't wanna fuse the paper into the fabric. We wanna just release the fusible webbing from it. So look at this, from the top, I slide it, I slide it, that's all, here. And be careful not to catch any of the edges. This is all that I'm going to do for pressing. Did you see how quickly I did that? Yeah. Set in on cotton. And what I like to do is I wait a few minutes, wait that it cools off, and then I grab my piece and I can check it was fused by just rolling it. Look at it. So it's not coming up, that means it's fused. And did I fuse it? Look at how nice it released it. So the fusible webbing got stuck right into the fabric and it's perfect. I did not overpress. I'm gonna push this back down so that way we are ready for our next step. Are you ready? I'm ready. Perfect. And our next step has to do with scissors. Did you notice how I rough cut my shape out of the fabric? Because I don't like to hold a big pieces of fabric as I detail cut. We're gonna need a pair of scissors, and you can choose your favorite scissors. Sometimes I use a basic gingham scissors. One of my personal favorites are those scissors. They're Dovo scissors from Germany, and what I have a pair that it's my special pair. I never use it for paper, and then I have a one pair that I use it on everything. So this is a medium-sized scissors, and what it's fun about it is you hold your shape, and you're gonna make long, beautiful cuts long beautiful cuts. I want to see you cut with the pivot of your scissors, not the tip. Go ahead, try it out. And you're just cutting directly on that line? Yes, you want to cut it right on the line and nice long cuts. If you're making nice long cuts, you're avoiding those little shortcuts, you don't ragged the edges of your applique. So nice smooth cuts, keeping the fabric in a pivot. And with time, and of course, in your privacy in your home, you can make luxury long cuts and have fun with it. Oh, you're doing great, Kimberly. Thank you. Next time I'm cutting 30 blocks, I'm inviting you over. Okay. Oh, beautiful. And I will go around it and finish cutting all the way, all around the shapes. And I have some cut for us already ready, set, go. We have the umbrella. Notice it's cut out here, all on a line. And I also have handle, the tip of our umbrella, and a shadow. And I took that from another block. And now I'm gonna match it up with this block. We need our background, and we're gonna need our ironing board again. And this is so much fun. So even that we have pressed our background before, we're gonna give it one more press 
make sure there is never a wrinkle. You know, sometimes you don't see the first time and you have to repeat things second time. And now we're gonna take the paper away and how I do it is I pick up an area where I can crease the edge. Did you see how I creased it? And I grab it and I pull gently the paper away. Oh, look at this. Now we have an umbrella. Ready, set, go. This particular block is a little bit off There's, uh, the design. So really you don't want to draw lines and crease it and make a center. You want to lay your umbrella on your background and look at it that the umbrella is just about an inch here, an inch here, and then place your handle onto it. Did you see how I creased it? Mm -hmm. Do you want to try one, please? And so we're not going to be using any type of template to follow, to place your applique. We're just eyeballing it today. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can use layouts and uh, uh, use them on a light table. And there are many different fun light tables. But this is a rather simple design and small design that you can really center it up on your block and then put the handle, center it up. And what I like to do is this little board, you have some lines under there. Can you see them? And it kind of gives you an idea. Oh, I'm right on a line. My handle is nice and straight. One inch, one inch, just about one inch right here. So I know my block is placed. Oh, we're missing a little tip. And remember, uh, one uh, tip for uh, taking the paper away. If you have sharp um, uh, pieces like this, don't crease the tip. Try to find an area that it's long and crease that because you don't want to fray the tip as you crease. You want to put as little stress on those little pieces as possible. Oh, perfect. And so these two pieces we're placing under the other two. Yes. Yeah. And in the pattern, they're designed that they're going to be slightly overlapped. So there is a little overlap right here, a little bit overlap right here, and you can place them down and be very free with this particular design. Some designs, a more detail where you have flowers and mm -hmm. branches, you have that doubled line that shows you which piece go under which. For this one, this is truly a beginner applicators and I think we are good to go with this one. Now we're gonna fuse our pieces to our background. So our iron comes in, you're gonna hold it from the top and you're not gonna slide the iron because you don't wanna move any of the pieces. You're gonna place it down, place it down, place it down, and you're fusing your pieces, and this time we're gonna use a little bit more heat than the first time. Now we can do it second time, and I like to just make tiny little circles and fuse it down, and we are ready, set, go. You do not want to overpress. The longer you press, the stiffer the fusible webbing gets, and we want it nice and soft because we're planning to zigzag and stitch around it. Now, again, to check if we have fused our applique shape in place, we wait a few seconds and we roll it. If our shapes are popping off, you just have to press it one more time. If they're not, we are ready, set, go for our next step. What it's gonna be, stitching around the edges.